The whole of the festival was very memorable for me, especially for me as a Palestinian, because what it really meant was that um, a group of people who are exceptional because they're right and therefore they can communicate their ideas to the outside world had been invited to look at the situation of my fellow countrymen and women. I think one of the most shocking experiences of the Parfest trip was being told that we were going to a refugee camp, Balato refugee camp. Which was a complete eye-opener. Um, it's been there 63 years. Um, didn't start off as buildings, but it's now buildings. Basically this concrete city of one room dwellings which have been stacked on top of each other and not only that but there's a wall around the perimeter. My job on that day was to run some workshops for, for young kids at, at the refugee camp as part of the cultural centre. We asked them to write about what they saw when they looked in the mirror in the morning. Um, what their lives were like. One of the things that many of them mentioned were these airless, airless places they walked. Um, I mean, like many aspects of this trip, it was life-changing, really. But of course, talking to the, some of the students who we talk to in Balata, you realize they are, they are full of energy and um, curiosity. It's not a completely hopeless place, far from it. Dub um, is what for you? Peace? It's, how do you say peace in Arabic? Salam. 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 And, and this also is Al-Aqsa? And that was, it is remarkable. It's just remarkable. And on one level, it's an experience that is devastating to see people suffering so much. On the other hand, it's an experience which is absolutely uplifting to see people still, still wanting, wanting to share and, and live and, and aspire to something more, not giving in to being depressed, but trying to look for something on a higher plane. I thought that the workshops, wherever they took place, uh, did engage uh, the, the students um, in a way which um, was very refreshing. The world can never be our enemy if it sees that we have a just cause. I have no doubt that Palfesters will play a vital role in that respect. It's not just a question of people coming along, uh, some visitors and looking around curiously and thinking, gosh, how interesting, and going home. This, these are people who've come, they've got eyes, they've got ears, they want to write, and they will write and they will change. What do you think of what Nijma said? She's saying that we should have just come back to Arabic. Um, yeah, I do agree that we should come back to Arabic, but I don't think that Arabic is a spilling of like, just demolishing or something like that, because Arabic language is somehow related to religion, to Islam, and to Quran and stuff like that. They cannot just change this because this is a very important point. <laughs> reason, which is the double face of people. Yeah, that's good. It was very much not just a case of us holding forth. We were learning and hearing as much as they were. That our function is not to go and entertain the prisoners, our function is to open the prison.
allowed to watch the uh, Oscar ceremony one evening of sort of three years into captivity. <laughs> Didn't know who, who any of the actors were and hadn't obviously seen any of the movies. And this, this huge actor t tips up in his tuxedo and says, who'd have thought a year ago that Nelson Mandela would have been freed and the Berlin Wall came down. And I looked at my little Irish friend and he looked at me and thought, not us. <laughs> the itinerary of the festival, which was extremely well worked out, uh, took us from place to place, exposed the participants to what Palestinians face day in, day out, the checkpoints, the fear of arrest. Indeed, uh, one or two of our members were uh, detained. Nothing prepares you for the actual physical experience of those checkpoints. And all these things which, as we went through the Palfest experience, you, you realise are so routine, but they are extraordinary things to have as a part of a routine. And I think that's what you, you realise, this is what this extraordinary uh, occupation of West Bank is all about. Hebron sort of brought it really, really into sharp focus, I think, what, it, what the occupation was about, what the settlers were about. It's like being in, it's like being in a video game, you know, one of those where you're a soldier and you have to run around a kind of maze and everywhere you go there's a, there's a gate or there's a bolted door or there's netting above you and there's no light and there's no people and there are, there are closed shops and stalls. That's Hebron. It was horrendously oppressive. So now, no shops open, no customers, no shopper. People feel afraid because it's closed. Look at the dead end. Another dead end. That was closed since year 2000. Or it's closed since year 2000. Total. Well, he led us up this stone staircase, quite a narrow one, I think, like a spiral staircase, and we got nearly to the top, and there was a woman, about in the thirties, with a with a little baby on her hip, gurgling away, and was smiling and greeting us, hello everybody, and we're all standing there gawping at her, because on top of the, uh, on top of this, this stairwell, open to the sky, but with netting over it and rubbish on top of it, which the settlers again had thrown over. It's quite astonishing, the kind of level of contempt that demonstrates. The last night kind of capped everything that we'd, we'd experienced because we, we were getting there and suddenly there were phone calls going between all the various bits of the group. We were in a bus hurtling through the darkness hearing rumours of tear gas that rocks had been thrown, the, the army had moved in. Could we carry on? They're shooting. They're shooting, the people yeah. in the tent say they're shooting tear gas around the tent and uh, even the most sort of, you know, brave young man type is saying don't come, don't come, go back. But we have people in there, so. And we brought artists and they're sitting in the tent, so we have to get them out. 
I have to, to try and get to them. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the ones who are leaving the tent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to go and I try and get them out. Tell them we'll get as close as we can. Mohammed, bring the foot. Follow, follow. Uh, listen, what can we do to help? We're trying, we're, 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 close, we're trying to get as close as we can with the bus to try and get people out. And then this strange smell fills the bus and it's tear gas. Oh, eyes, you can open the door. Don't, don't, don't. Just, just you. Close the door, no one can go out. Okay. Yeah, we're, uh, uh, we're holding the, the gas. Uh, here. Here. I have a whole. Uh, hold it. Hold it and smell it. Just hold it against Here. And there were uh, okay. soldiers on the hill, and then they left. And then, you know, some uh, some settlers, I guess you can say, they drove by and uh, they, they kind of threw stones at them. And then uh, the tear gas uh, canisters came back. نتيجة الأعياد والضغط اللي بتعرض له السكان في فترة الأعياد عيد البيسح له أكبر عيد الفصح أكبر أعياد الإسرائيليين بتتسكر شوارع المنطقة من نوع دخول أو خروج السكان منها لبطرق التفافية مع أنه مسموح الدخول والخروج للمستوطنين والسواح الأجانب Oh, Allah, he is burning. Yeah, it's pretty burning. Uh, well, uh, as you can see, uh, we can barely open our eyes uh, because of the tear gas. Apparently, they knew that we are coming, uh, so uh, they tried to, uh, you know, uh, disturb the situation in order to prevent us from reaching the tent, the steadfastness tent in Sirwa, because it's a symbol of what's uh, going on around uh, Jerusalem as a whole. Especially in Silwan, you know, the area where the tent is erected is actually threatened by the Israeli authorities, uh, especially the municipality of Jerusalem. They want to, to demolish most of the houses that are available in this area. I think we either move now or we go in the car later. You know, if, if we're going to move, then we should move now because things are getting more and more. And as we came down the hill, I remember thinking this is quite, it was quite spooky. What's going to happen next? Because suddenly there were burning tires and things in the streets. <laughs> Inside, inside, inside. And eventually they went away, and eventually, and this is the power of the trip itself. We made it happen. Have you ever heard the Arabic in reggae, reggae Arabic? Because <laughs> I'm gonna do a reggae in Arabic, but sounds I need really you. Bad, so sounds good. bad, so you're gonna be punished. <laughs> This was the last show for Palfest 2011. For everybody who's come here, we thank you for being here. And I'm sure that everybody would have liked to leave and not be here, um, you know, in this uh, uncomfortable situation. We thank our hosts at the Solidarity Camp in Silwan. Thank you very, very much for allowing us this room to be here with you tonight. On behalf of Palfest, Thank you so much, everybody. And a last word from Fakhri Abujir. مضبوط إنه شكرا لمن أتاحوا لنا أن نبتسم من خلال الألم والدموع شكرا للجميع. Thank you. The real thanks is for those who have allowed us to smile through our tears. Thank you, everybody. And Dam, thank you, Dam. It's not thank you, Dam. We're so glad you stuck it with us. Thank you.